Hi there. Well, we're still on our little journey to discover our real self, the real self that you are. You know, as I've been mentioning to you, you've had eons and eons and eons of, of time evolving. And in the process of this movement of consciousness, when you were first birthed out of the infinite intelligence, you were minute, as tiny as a, tinier, tinier than a uh, pinpoint, tinier, much tinier. And then as you m gathered momentum, and that was the simplest of simple, of simple, 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 consciousness, but it was a consciousness. And as it evolved and moved to its many, many, many evolutions, it became more conscious. With every evolution, more consciousness was more unveiled. So as you can see, as you came in from the infinite intelligence, and I like to think about the infinite intelligence said to itself, if this is just a story, I'm just playing a game here. But infinite intelligence said to itself, hmm, I'd like to have somebody to play with. I want to have some fun on this universe and uh, do some fun things. <clears throat> I need some playmates. But it would not be any fun to have playmates that weren't as intelligent as I am. So in order to have playmates that are as intelligent as I am, then I need to create them out of my very substance so that they can evolve and become conscious that they are God conscious. And then we can play in the universe together as God realized souls. So I'm going to send them down. I'll send thousands and billions of them down. And they will move from the vastness of this universe and pick up momentum and become more and more and more conscious. And then what's going to happen to them is that they're going to evolve into the simplest of simplest consciousness, a piece of sand. But now it's getting more conscious. So now it can be more conscious of its evolution. Oh, it doesn't have thinking possibilities like you and I do because we had to move through these different phases in order to become the vegetable stage and the other many stages, the rock, the metal, they were all evolving consciousness. Even the stone has a very minute consciousness. Now the vegetable and flowers, you know, there was a lot of talk in the 70s about talking to your vegetables and they grew big because you talked to them and loved them. The flowers, your plants, etc. That was a big phase because they were conscious. They had some kind of consciousness of their evolution and yet they were very, very unconscious of all the other opportunities that were coming to them as they evolved. Okay, now they've evolved, you evolved through all this different aspects, aspects of yourself here, until you became the human consciousness, not the vegetable consciousness, not the animal consciousness, but the human consciousness. And the human consciousness was endowed 
with intelligence. Now the animal had some intelligence and you know your animals that you have at home <clears throat> have some intelligence. Some are more intelligent than others. They've had more lifetimes on the planet as an animal and they've evolved in their species and have moved out of the second dimension into the third, which means the humanhood. And so the evolution took place. Now, as you have evolved through these eons and eons of time, you gathered momentum, but you also gathered impressions, impressions onto your soul so to speak, impressions. And those impressions stuck with you like glue, like, uh, um, yeah, I, I, glue is a good, good thing to say. Stuck with you like glue. And all these impressions that you had as the animal, as all your travels have gelled, gelled in the soul. It's part of who you are. All the little impressions. Now you had all these impressions when you evolved into your humanhood. And all these little impressions now become what we call under a new law which is called the karmic law. So that you could have impressions and you would have insights and understandings, but you had to be under a law <clears throat> that was fair. As you sow, so shall you reap. So in this process of evolving, and having impressions and then coming into consciousness where you're aware at a subconscious level that you are now ready to do the human evolutionary process of development of consciousness. Now, you gathered momentum as a human. You gathered karma. As you sow, so shall you reap. So that was impressions. Karma is impressions, thought forms, energy patterns that you have. And as you know, I have my little karmic ball. And the karmic ball has all your, let's pretend now, has all your little impressions on it and all your karma. So it's it's wrapped up from the very core of it is that minute consciousness that you began with eons and eons and eons ago. But it is part of the very core of your essence because it has the DNA of God in it. It has the infinite intelligence in it. Because if it did not have, and listen to me on this, if it didn't have intel, infinite intelligence, it could not evolve. It had to have infinite intelligence to evolve. Because God loved us, or the infinite intelligence loved us, created us, but created us just finite. But with infinite intelligence that would be discovered as you grew and changed and became more conscious of the true self that you are. Now, here is your karmic ball. And so I'm going to do a little pretend here. Again, this is your karmic ball. And when you passed over in your last life, they took your little karmic ball and took your desires, your hopes and your dreams for the lifetime that you just left and said, this is all the karma. Now, this is all your karma. 
Now, you have a lot of wonderful karma in creativity. You have a lot, oh, an overload, a very much an overload of your physical self. You developed your muscles and you developed many, many aspects of the body. And so you have all that too. And, and you were highly uh, courageous. And that's part of your nature. You, you walked up and tried things that nobody else tried. So you have this courageous part about you that is part of your DNA, part of your, your personal DNA. You see, it belongs to you. You had the experiences. You chose certain desires to be fulfilled. And now you're here again at the point where you are looking at your desires and desiring with the lords of karma that have been with you for eons of time too. And they're looking at your karma and they're saying, you know what? Your highest desire that we have here, it's a 52 percenter. And it's called your spiritual desire. You know, many lifetimes you were uh, in different religions and you learned and you grew and you were an, a monk and then you became a priest and then you became a, a rabbi and all these things are part of your DNA. This was part of your spiritual growth. And so we have this wonderful little ball here, and you are very, very, very strong in extra, extra spiritual credits of being in monasteries, being in groups of people that were dedicated to God, even back when they believed God was the Son. But you believed it, and you loved it, and you honored the sun. You worshiped the sun. But as you came into other incarnations, you realized that the sun was not what you thought it was 17 lives ago. Because everything has developed and become more, become very much more conscious to you. Conscious awareness. So, here you are. So you have a lot of spiritual credits. And so I'd like to ask you, would you like to come down into Earth in 2015? And there's a lot of information now that was never available when you worshiped the sun and when you were in the Catholic Church or the Methodist Church or the synagogue or all the other religions, and you pass through those gates, there is a whole new thought form coming in about evolution of consciousness. And it's much more geared to who you are right now. So would you like to take that on? And we will prepare that you will meet a teacher that can help you in body, although we will be helping you out of body. Is that of any interest to you? Now, you, the karmic ball and the soul, are together here, and you're saying, yes, I'd like to do that, because I would like to get to the bottom of all this karmic stuff in a conscious way, because that's the only way I'm going to evolve into God consciousness. If I become aware that I have had other lifetimes, that the things I'm doing this lifetime are created from my other lifetimes, they, nothing new. They're all created from other lifetimes, giving you uh, information, supporting you to move into higher consciousness. Because every time you've come down in any lifetime, it's been geared to teach you and to help you and help you to grow. You see. So now, I'm going to pretend like, oh yeah, 
this is what I want to do. I want to come down. So they say, okay, we're going to come down, send you down. And now I have, we have to put you in a box. A box. Boop. We're going to put you in a box in a body. So right now, because I'm going to say this is your body. And this is your karma. And your nine-tenth subconscious, because this is where your karma is, and you are only one-tenth conscious of the body temple that you are. And the intelligence that you've accrued through all your many incarnations. Okay, here's the karmic ball. It's going into your subconscious. And this is your body. And you are now ready to be birthed in a family that's going to support your spiritual growth. So we're sending you down there. But we're going to give you some information before you go. You see, because you're only one-tenth conscious, and in order to grow spiritually, you have to work in the best interest of the development of your soul and to become God conscious. And because that is a primary goal of yours, that we have to prepare a life for you to get into the place you need to be at age 41 and bring you the people in your life, help you to do your karma, help you to be in integrity with yourself, be honest with yourself and grow and deal with some of your negative karma. And you have a lot of good karma also. It balances itself out. So, and you have free will to do what you need to do. And you can choose at any point to get off the path, which is God realization, because you get all invested in the third dimensional world. So it's yours to make your choices as you will. Okay, here you are. You are the body, and this is your karma. Okay, right here. It's sitting right here. Now you come back down into incarnation, and your body, temple, is now born, and it's going through its many phases, its many developments as a, a baby, a, a teenager, as an adult, as, as finally comes to the spiritual time, 41 years. And now you're ready to take a serious, serious, serious spiritual journey. Okay, what happens now for you is that this karmic ball, which is sitting in the subconscious here, is going to start to surface into your conscious mind. So as it surfaces into your conscious mind, you start to evaluate your karma on a conscious level. And every spiritual student that wants to become God realized has to come down into incarnation eventually and do this work. No one, no one, no soul is, is able to not do it because Earth, the planet, is where you're going to evolve into God consciousness. None of the other, you can't go to Venus and do it. You can't go to Mars. You can't go to another uh, universe because this is the universe of infinite intelligence and you are in finite intelligence. You haven't come into infinite, but you're moving forward to it. You're getting a lot more momentum. And here you are, you, your subconscious is now becoming conscious. And you no longer are dependent on the limitations of your body. You are no longer subject to your body as you have known it in any other lifetime. 
you start to move out of the body into another realm. And that realm is called the fourth dimension. And you might be third dimensionally in a body, in a going through your life, but fourth dimensionally, you are beginning to become consciously aware of your karma. And if you are fortunate enough to have an in-body teacher or an out-of-body teacher or somebody that's helping you to unravel this, <coughs> it will be unraveled much quicker and much easier. If you have, have done your meditations and you've done everything to prepare yourself for this year when you're 41 years old, because now you are on the masterhood realm. And you've been meditating for since you were just five years old. You just found it really interesting to meditate. And you looked to books and you were fascinated by spiritual growth. And finally, now that you have moved into a more adulthood and being able to take far more responsibility for your spiritual growth than you have before, you are ready to start to unhook this. And if you're ready to unhook it, this is a very, very important part in becoming a master and also moving into the realization of the infinite intelligence that you are. But right now you are not, you are finite. But you need to understand that everything that's happening to you right now in this lifetime is things that you wanted to happen, you wanted to happen, you wanted to overcome, to become more enlightened. You chose this life. You're listening to this video. You chose, you chose this life to move forward. And you chose to find somebody that could help you to do your spiritual work. And I sit here present with you, understanding that you are a soul in evolution and that you are in that place within yourself that you want to take full, not half responsibility, full responsibility for your spiritual self. So now it's up to you to do that which is yours to do, which is to have the courage to look at this karmic ball and help to take it apart. Because the time is here. There is so much more information for you now that you're in 2045. You see, there's so much, the world has moved much farther in the understanding of the karmic law of, of karma, how karma affects each soul differently. And that the world is made up of all these souls that are doing their karma. The countries, USA, India, are all doing their karma, believe it or not. But they all have a karmic energy in this universe. I won't go there today because that's a, a big, big subject. But right now, you have to be interested in you and what you need to do to open up the floodgates to your spiritual self. And the only way you're going to do it is your diligence. Because sometimes it's very scary to open up this door. 
because there's many, many, many things hidden underneath the surface, and these things will need to be discovered by you so that you can take responsibility for them as you move into God consciousness. You can't have this big ball of karma going into God consciousness. It has to be dropped, done with. It will go. It will not go into God consciousness. Let me tell you, it will not go. It will not go. You'll just be back in another lifetime. So it's up to you. If this is what you want to do with your life, then you start to really, really look at your life and, and <clears throat> be responsible. Be responsible for your own spiritual growth and know that you created this life. The people in this world are there, there in your life because you wanted them in there and they wanted you in their life too so that you could work out differences or support each other in a new way. It's there. Move it to its highest realm. Move it to its highest expression of wh what it is. It's love, presenting love, presenting love. Love your karma. Love it and be so glad that you are in the pickle, if you're in a pickle that you're in because you wanted to be in that pickle, that problem, so that you could dismantle it. Because you have to dismantle your own karma. Dismantle your own karma. And the good news is at least 60% of it you don't have to bother with. But the other 40%, Maybe you, you're lucky enough to only have to do 25%. Don't know too many of those souls. They have to have done a lot, a lot of good sowing to get that much uh, forgiven or let go of. It's always forgiven. It's no big deal about forgiven. But anyway, so your job, your job is to look at yourself. Your job, no matter what's happening in your family or at work or wherever you are in this universe, start to look at it this way. These are souls in my life to help me to become God conscious. <clears throat> They're here <clears throat> for that purpose. And that purpose only. What do I need to learn from this soul? What is it that I need to do? Is there a piece I need to forgive? If I don't like Joe Blow, why don't I like him? Does he remind me too much of me? That I found that out many, many times. The people I didn't like too well, I had karma with. And sometimes they react doing the same action as I did five lives ago, <clears throat> and I don't like them too well. You see? You have work to do. And you're getting a lot of help to do it. When I began my journey, there was very little help of this type of this nature. There was a lot of hidden information that I found. But now we are in another world, another universe, so to speak. It's not the same universe at all that I woke up in in 1933. This is far different far different. I'm here to support you, to help you through those crises, and give you the strength to do that which is yours to do. I cannot do it for you. 
I can help you. I can show you the way. I can give you clues. But it's up to you. Only you can take this upon yourself because it's your responsibility to understand your whole soul, the whole being, and that means your God consciousness. So I, I hope I've given you a lot to think about. I hope that I kind of came in here with this video and did a little bit of scrambling up your brain so that you could start to think it about your life differently so that you can take new responsibility and you can't blame anybody but yourself for whatever is going on in your life you see be your best friend Move in consciousness to the infinite intelligence that you are. Bye-bye for now.